Ma'am, may I ask why you're here today? Is it for an abortion? It's not... Is it for some, like, some sort of birth control or something? Did you, like, already have an abortion? I mean, look, I don't... I know that we don't know each other, and I know that, you know, it's weird to, like, you know, air out your personal business with some stranger who's standing on the sidewalk. I get it. I understand. I just am here because this place is a place of death, and if you already had an abortion, you can have forgiveness for that. Jesus will offer you forgiveness for that. You don't have to live in guilt anymore, and you don't have to, like, keep pushing down your conscience that's screaming at you that you murdered your own child. Coming to Jesus, it's just... It's about coming clean for what we've done, you know. I mean, somebody, somebody says, hey, you know, hey, Alan, aren't you a sinner too? Yeah. My name's Alan. I, I've sinned many times, you know, and I, uh, you know, sometimes I still do fall into sin as well. I have a lot of crime on my record against God, a lot of times when I've broken God's law. But Jesus has rescued me. And I was, I was just yelling, preaching, you know, about, about what Jesus did. The whole reason that he came to earth, I mean, yeah, he gave us good moral teachings. Yeah, he taught us the golden rule. You know, he said all kinds of really wise stuff in the, in the Bible, in the New Testament. But the real reason that he came, like the main point, was to seek and save lost people, to come and rescue people who were dead, and so that people, not only Jewish people, but also non-Jewish people like myself and like you, that we could actually have hope, that we could have forgiveness of sin, in this life and also in the next life. I mean, the next life is, it can sort of seem far off when you're young like us. But, you know, you never know when our last breath is going to be, you know. None of us know when we're going to stand before God. The Bible says that we, at the end of our life, will stand before God to face judgment. And, you know, if we stand before God to be judged for what we've done, then we would all be found guilty because... You know, if you're honest with yourself, you, you'll admit that you've lied before, you know, probably too many times to count like I have. You know, you've, you've probably stolen something like I have. You know, you have probably, uh, you probably, like, had at least sexual thoughts outside of marriage. And, uh, you know, if you came here to abort your child, then you're guilty of murder. And I'm t I also am guilty of murder because I have actually been, like, unjustifiably angry, like I've hated people before for not, like, not a sufficient reason. That means I'm guilty of murder too. And see, when I came to Jesus, I came with all of my guilt and laid it down at Him, at His feet, because He invited me to. He says, come to me with your guilt and I'll take it away. He said He came to die to ransom people. And when we come, there's only one solution to sin. Either we pay the penalty for it it's like in a courtroom. You know, if I speed down Lindsay at 100 miles an hour, I'm going to get caught. I'm going to be, you know, taken before the judge. The judge is going to look at me and be like, look, the evidence is clear. There are three officers who witnessed it. You are going 100 miles an hour down Lindsay. You're going to jail, right? And I can't say, well, dude, I'll just, I'll do better. I won't ever do that again. He's going to throw me in jail anyway. What happens is he, he's going to give me a fine or like, you know, a long time in prison. And if it's like a million bucks, I can't pay that fine. But if, imagine if somebody comes in and says, I'm going to pay that fine for him, and he's going to go free. I would be really thankful to that person who paid my fine so that I wouldn't have to go to jail for all that time for what I've done. And that's what Jesus did on the cross. He didn't ever do anything wrong. He didn't ever break God's law. He didn't ever murder anybody or hate anybody. Instead, he... He loved people, and yet people put him to death, but he went willingly. He said, no one's taking my life away from me. I'm giving it up willingly to ransom people. So he came in and he paid my fine so that I can go free. He's forgiven my sin, and he's given me a heart that no longer wants to do the sin that I used to do. And so what you need to do today, today, is seek that forgiveness from Jesus. He is he's the Lord of this universe. He created it. And he's going to be the judge of every person. Or he'll be the savior of the people who depend on him. And that's what we have to do. And that's what you have to do today. I don't know what's in your past. I don't know if you've had an abortion. Even if you haven't. I, mean, I suspect you have. But even if you haven't, you still need Jesus' forgiveness for what you've done. Just like I do. So I'm really urging you to repent of your sin. Admit and confess to God. 
that you have sinned and you've broken his law and then beg Jesus to forgive you because he died on the cross for sinners. Ask him to forgive your sin. Ask him to give you a heart that no longer desires to do the evil things that you do. Whatever evil things you do, he can give you freedom from that. He can give you a heart that doesn't want to lie anymore. It doesn't want to cheat. It doesn't want to, uh, you know, whatever, whatever things you do and the things that like lead you to be selfish and wreck relationships. I mean, I don't have to know you to know that, you know, in some sense you do that because we all do it. Everybody does it. I do it. You know, and I've done it. We all need Jesus' forgiveness and we all need his gift of eternal life. And if you're coming to this place, uh, you know, again, I don't know why you came here, but this place is a place that has made its money a very good living for those people who work inside, especially the doctor. He drives an extremely nice car. He lives in a very, very large, very expensive, very nice house. He has a boat and a lake house. He's very, doing very well, and that's because he kills children every week. Like 50 children every week, he murders them. And people pay him well to do it. This man is very, very guilty. And anybody who consorts with somebody of his level of guilt, in some sense, incurs guilt on themselves as well. And I know that I don't know you, but I have love for you because Jesus has given love, for me, uh, given love to me and like it just spills out to people. And I know it's weird that I'm standing on the sidewalk, but honestly, this is one of the ways that that I want to reach out to people and tell people this is really good news that Jesus died for sinners it's really good I'd rather be with my family right now I've got two young kids I'd rather be with them but instead I'm out here because people need to know and someone like you you need to know it and I want you to know it because knowing Jesus is the best thing it's not only forgiveness of sin it's not only eternal life but it's it's the joy of serving Him and doing what we were created to do. All of that is found in Jesus. Is there any reason why you would not turn to Jesus and give Him full control of all of your actions from this day forward and ask Him to forgive you? Is there any reason why you would not repent of your sin and why you wouldn't put your trust in Jesus and why you wouldn't give Him your whole life to like, submit all of your decisions to Him from this moment going forward? I can't really hear you. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're a Christian? May I ask why you came here? I mean, look, if you're a, if you're a Christian, then, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully everything I was saying was resonating within you. I would urge you, never come back to this place. Even if, even if it was like, and again, it's because of the, the highway noise, I can't hear very well. Um, you know, this place, every time that we help this guy make money, every time that we do business with him, you know, that is something that displeases the Lord. He is going to judge this man if he does not repent. He is going to break him down and he is going to cast him into hell. Unless he repents, and I pray he does. I told him, I pray it, you know. I don't want him to, I don't want him to die in his sin. You know, and I'm certainly not going to, I mean, just to be clear, I'm not a violent man. I would never engage in violence, you know, toward anybody. So I'm praying that he will repent. I'm praying that he'll turn away from his sin. When you were in there, did you, you know, so you say you're a Christian and you know, you knew that this place is a place of abortion. Did you, did you tell him to repent when you saw him or did you tell the people inside to repent? May I ask why not if you're a Christian? didn't really occur to you? It did, maybe it didn't, like the, the thought did not enter your mind? You know, somebody who has been set free by Jesus, somebody who is in love with Jesus, that's like the thing that they want to talk about. You know, that's what they want to, there's nothing better to talk about than Jesus himself. And especially to people who are perishing like these people inside here, you know, not only the, not only the people who are sitting inside like waiting to murder their child, but also the people who have just finished murdering their child, and also the workers, especially the workers, because they're steeped in blood every day, you know, every day. And they need to be, they need to be given the opportunity and reminded of the, of the necessity 
to repent, reminded of the necessity to come away from this place. You know, if I, let's say that I like were committing adultery, so I'm married, okay? So if I were committing adultery and like going out every night and getting drunk and then having sex with whoever, all right? And then my wife catches me and she's like, you got to stop that. Stop, stop cheating on me and getting drunk every night. And I'll say, well, okay, listen, sweetheart, I know that I've been, you know, an adulterous man. Tell you what, I was going out seven nights a week. I'll only go out three nights a week now. Is that cool? Like I'm repenting here in front of you. I admit what I did was wrong. I'm only going to go out three nights a week. Cool? She would not be okay with that. You know, that would be, <laughs> that'd be making a mockery of the idea of what it means to repent. You know, I wouldn't be, uh, it would show that my heart is not really in it. You know, instead what I should do is like fall down on my face and in earth, you know, in shattering like sorrow over what I've done, you know, and then and beg for her to forgive me. And then, shoot, if she takes me back, you know, what, what joy that would be to be like, my man, you know, my wife took me back and I was such a punk to her. I treated her so bad. And yet she took me back. She forgave me. And now, like, we have our relationship is, you know, is restoring and it's moving forward and I love her and I want to tell people about how great she is that she took me back, you know. And if I see somebody else who is going in the same situation, like, I want to tell them the same thing. If I see some other married guy going out and doing the same thing, then I want to warn him, look, you know, you're, you're putting your relationship at risk, you know. You're, you're doing great damage to your wife who loves you, man. Stop it. Don't reduce it from seven weeks, seven days a week to three days a week or two days a week. Quit. Stop. Repent. Show that your heart is not with that evil anymore. Show that your heart is with Jesus. And so this is something that only you can find out for yourself, only you can do with self-examination. But is your heart with Jesus? Like, what, what does anybody in there need to hear more than, than that they stand condemned before God? But there is forgiveness, you know. You could go back in there right now and tell them that. You don't have to yell and you know yell like I'm doing. I'm not screaming, but I'm yelling. You know, I can't go in there. Uh, but you know, you can, and you can tell them very respectfully and you know quietly. But you can share with them the good news of Jesus. They need to hear it from someone who has been inside and someone like who they they know their name. They they know your name. You know, they know they have a, a relationship with you. They need to know too. And your friends and your family need to know that living for Jesus is far better than anything of this world. But if we don't live for Jesus, if we're not committing all of our actions to Him, then that shows that the state of our heart is not right before God. I appreciate you listening to me, um, you know, and I will, I will definitely pray for you. I mean, I don't... Can I know your first name so I can pray for you? What is it? Okay. Well, I'll pray for you. I don't... I mean, it's, it's still a little bit weird for me to stand out here and, you know, do what I'm doing, so I'm, I don't really know what else to say, but, uh, you know, I would just, like I said, I would encourage you don't come back to this place for any reason. Even if it's for like women's health issues or birth control or whatever it may be, there's other places to do that. Other places to get checkups, other places for all that stuff that do not make their business and make their money off of murdering children. And who would not have like a vested interest in lying to you about whether you were pregnant or something like that. <laughs> 